Hello everyone, my name is Scalty, and today we're going to be creating 10 rotors, stators, and motors per minute with an opportunity to create 15 motors per minute in total from this factory. I hope you enjoy. Alright, before we get the build started, let's go over a few things that we need to know about the factory. Over on the right hand side, you can see our to-do list. Thank you to update 6. The area for our factory is going to be 7 by 18. You can also see the decals on the foundations um, you know, in front of us. Um, it's a little bit larger than a typical factory, and that's because in making it an extra, I guess, two foundations wider, um, it allows for a little bit more breathing room when it comes to working on the logistics. It's not as tight to navigate, so it's overall a more enjoyable experience to build it and also navigate the factory itself. In terms of our input, we're going to need 225 coal and iron, along with 210 copper ore, and the approximate power consumption based on miners is going to be 500 megawatts, and then the total power, I'm sorry, the total points that you'll be able to get out of this factory once all is said and done is 22,800, because yes, while we are making 10 rotors, 10 motors, and 10 stators, we're actually going to, once the storage is full, for the rotors and the stators. Uh, take those extra 10 per and make an additional five motors per minute. Once all the motors are full, we'll technically be making 15 motors per minute and we can put all of those into the awesome sink. Additionally, we're gonna need some alt recipes for the build. We're going to need the steel rotor. It's gonna be instrumental in the cleanliness of this build and making overall everything overall a lot easier to work with. Additionally, it would be highly Highly recommended that you have the smart splitter unlocked. We'll be able to utilize that for some very easy load balancing later on in the build. If not, I will also provide an alternative solution, but it would be pretty nice to have that on hand. So, the overall layout that you can see here looks a little different than what I've normally done in the past. I'm running the inputs in from underneath the actual factory itself. So if you're familiar with previous guides, just imagine that we have a sandwich layer below this and we have our inputs coming in from underneath. These two here in the middle, or if we actually look at the 18 here, this line here is our middle. So we have nine foundations toward the back here. It's gonna say 10 because I highlighted the window. Now we have nine. So on the back of the middle foundation uh, we're going to have an input and then right after that toward the back we're going to have another one centered in the foundation this can be either your steel i'm sorry this can be either your iron and your coal or coal and your iron it doesn't really matter it's all going to go to the same place anyway in the back here this is where our copper is going to be coming in 210 per minute and then these x's here are just a little bit of a visual tell in terms of where we're gonna be placing our smelters and our foundries. So as you can see here, we have eight smelter locations. Well, that doesn't really make sense because we only have 210 copper coming into the system, so we only need seven, that is correct. But it is easier to just add one more smelter and do a one to eight line than a one to seven splitter logistics system. So that's why we're doing that. Also, we have symmetry. Additionally, for our foundries, we have the 225 coal and iron coming in, which, oh wait, that also only needs five foundries. Why do we have six? Again, pretty easy load balancing. So that's what these X's represent. And overall, our base structure here is nine meters in height. We have two full wall heights, and then we have a one meter wall, and that's going to be used for a one meter foundation to cover this entire area. Up front here, three foundations in, we have three floor, I'm sorry, we have three conveyor walls. That's going to be for our stators, our motors, and our rotors in that order. And then we have some doors on the side in order to gain access into the rear of the factory. Typically, and what you'll see probably at the end of this video, is I'm going to kind of fill this space in with some walls overall. Because we'll actually be filling this in as well, so that way we have a full 18 by 7 area filled in. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get our... A layer filled in here, building out the top of the sandwich layer, if you will. Oop. And then once we have this built, we're also going to need in, to build up another 9 meter height. 
And the reason why we want to do that is because we're also going to be building our motors on this floor. So essentially, we're going to have this being three floors in total, depending on, I guess, how you look at it. Oop, we need to actually fill this space in. Um, so we're going to be producing our ingots on this floor. The next floor up, we'll be producing our steel pipes and our wire. The floor above that, we'll be creating our stators and our rotors. And then all of that would be coming back down to the floor here where we will be making our motors. So I'm gonna go ahead and just time lapse through getting this all filled in and then we will work on placing some machinery. Okay, so just to quickly recap, we should have a four meter high uh, wall here then we have our ninth meter, which has our one meter foundations, and then another two four meter walls, and then again, a one meter foundation, some walls as well. Go ahead and cap this out actually right here. And if you use mods, the smart mod would be an amazing benefit to rapidly filling in the layers here. However, there are certain situations where the smart mod does not work and it is actually preferred to just be able to zoop instead. Now that we have that complete, when it comes to placing our first machinery, we're going to go in two foundations essentially. And on this third foundation, we're going to be placing our first assembler. And when placing this, you want the uh, assembler to not encroach on the edge of the foundation here. You want to make sure that it's contained on that side. We're going to place another one directly in the middle of the factory and then one symmetrically on the other side. So yes, we are making the 10 motors, which is going to be these two assemblers here. This middle one here is going to be for when the rotors and the stators are full. Those excess will go into this assembler here and we'll be producing a total of 15 motors per minute. When it comes to the foundries, we're going to go in from one of the side assemblers two foundations, and then on that third foundation is where we're going to place our foundry. And when placing this one, you want to place it directly on the middle here. It seems like I'm being locked in. There we go. So you want the feet to be overhanging the front of the foundation here, and the way you can kind of determine the alignment is when you place a conveyor floor hole, we're going to want to place it in the middle of the quadrant here. So this bisects or dissects, I can't remember which one it is. Um, so in the middle quadrant of the foundation uh, is where we want our floor hole. So that way we can place a lift just like that. So let's go ahead and we're going to get the other three in place. And make sure when you're relying on the green lines here, make sure it's not relying on the assembler, it's actually in alignment with the foundry next to it. Can throw you off a little bit. So we have our six foundries in place, and if we just follow this all the way down as well, you can see here we have our X's on how that's going to align. So also again, if we look down here, we have our four X's, uh, one foundation in from the back and the side. And when placing this one in a similar fashion, uh, we're going to have the output be in aligned with how we have this one set up here on the quadrant. So if we take it all the way down, we have it right there in front. Also, actually, a quick tip. I'm going to delete this and replace it. If you look at the chevrons, the upward and downward direction chevrons, uh, if those are running the length of the factory or essentially not in line with the... Uh, machine when you place a lift by default it will um, either be facing directly toward the machine or directly opposite so you have a consistent direction in which you can rotate uh, be it 80 or, I'm sorry um, 180 or zero degrees essentially so we have the four smelters in place here do the same thing on the opposite side again wanting to make sure that the output will be facing uh, that middle quadrant, essentially.
And then all we need to do here is get all of our conveyor lift floor holes in place. And so here we're not going to be clipping. So if you get the yellow hologram that's too close, you want to take it one step out. Same thing for our batteries here. Essentially, if you also look at it, it's just going to be right along the foundation line here. The seam is where we want these to all be placed. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of the inputs and the outputs for all this. Uh, same thing for the assemblers, actually. Uh, place them on the uh, seam here. And then on the edge of the seam on this side, just like that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these placed and uh, time lapse through it. Okay, so now that we have all of our lifts and everything in place, I guess actually before we go underneath into the underbelly, uh, let's go ahead and actually get our lifts that are going to be in place to take things to the next floor. And so the foundations in between our smelters and our foundry, uh, we want to place a conveyor lift floor hole on the seam and in the middle of the foundation. Do that on both sides. And then for the items that will be coming down into the assemblers here, uh, essentially one foundation back from the middle assembler we want to place the lift floor holes on the cross sections or where the four foundations intersect like so we can go ahead and leave that for now and then now we can head on down below so before we do anything actually down on this floor it probably makes more sense to kind of see what we have going on on this floor. It's a little intimidating since we have all our all of our floor holes. But essentially anything on the outside is our input going up into the machinery. Anything that's on the interior side is an output. And so we have this double floor here because the output from this floor is going to be residing in this area here. And the input logistics will be down below. So on this floor here, let's go ahead and where our inputs are for our foundries, go ahead and get our floor holes in place. And so again, that's going to be on the seam of the foundry, or I'm sorry, the seam of the foundation, and then just in line with what we have going on above. And then here, it's just going to be again on the seam, but in the uh, middle of the foundation. Don't worry about anything up front where we have our assemblers or anything like that. We're just going to be focusing on the machinery back here. So now that we have all of these in place, we can go ahead and get our lifts connected in. Uh, the speed here isn't particularly important. You just want to be able to make sure that um, you know it's at least consistent, I, I suppose. Uh, but you can use Mark 1s, 2s, 3s, or greater if you have them. Uh, I will be sure to stress... Um, when a specific belt tier is required for any kind of logistics and balancing. The orientation, you know, whatever you so choose, I like to have them facing the middle, typically. It's just like my go-to methodology. Oh, did not connect. Okay, so now that we have our input list in place, let's head down to the ground floor here. And so let's go ahead and start with the simple part first. So we have our copper ore coming in here. And what we're going to do is just bring this into the middle in between the axes, if you will. And place a splitter with the input facing the lift. Getting it connected up like that. And then essentially in between uh, our smelters here. You want to go ahead and get a splitter in place that's in line 
with the above, so that way we can just bring the lifts down like so. And then in between these smil uh, splitters, uh, we want to go ahead and place another one essentially on... Oops, I think we need to go back one. Yes. Bring it back so that way the edges are essentially in line. So that way when we connect these up, we get our nice 90 degree bends, connect the splitter into the middle one, and repeat the same process on the other side. That takes care of our copper ore. So let's go ahead and work on our foundries to making or making our steel. So typically here, what I would recommend, and again, it doesn't really matter which one is which. Um, I guess the only important thing is whatever one you want on the ground floor is going to be coming out of this hole here. And we want the splitter in line with one of the inputs, be it this one or this one. It doesn't particularly matter. I'm going to go ahead and place it here. And we want it in line with our floor hole output facing toward that splitter and then what we're going to do is for the one that it's in alignment with we want to place the splitter far enough away so if we take a look at it i believe it's going to be here nope one more step out so just offset from the middle and when bringing the lift down, you want to make sure that you see this accordion here. Reason being, we stay in alignment with, you know, the bottom input is going up on the right. So again, on the right side here. And then we take this belt and we connect it. We have our nice 90 degree bend overall. So again, same thing. Bring the right side down. Connect it in. Connect it here. And then when it comes to this input, what we can do here is just build up a splitter three times in total. You can delete the bottom two if you'd like. And then for over here, right next to it in alignment, uh, place a splitter. And when you're placing this one specifically, make sure you're not looking at the belt where you get this smooth movement or a smooth alignment. Look at the floor down below so you get the low angle. So typically if you're not flying, you're probably going to end up being able to do that quite easily. So that way you're snapping to the right location. Face the input toward the middle, connect it up. And then we're going to rinse repeat the process. On this side, bring your list down one step. So this way you get your nice 90 degree bend and essentially repeat the same thing on the opposite side. As you can see here, the one thing I've opted to do is maintain that sense of symmetry. So on the left side of the factory, you know, we have the left side here is the higher one on the right side of the factory. The right side is the higher one. So that way, just from the front, we do maintain that level of symmetry. When it comes to the input, all we need, just need to do is just make sure that the lift that we bring up is in alignment with our splitter and get it connected just like that. If you're not a huge fan of the floating aspect of things, you can always take the stackable conveyor poles, place those in a cross formation, well, actually, not a, sorry, not a cross formation, but just like that. Or if you don't like how it's just on the two like that, you can always go this approach and do two like so. And just giving it some actual structure and support. You can do the same thing over here if you wanted. Just like that. Totally up to you. I don't mind the little floatiness factor, if you will. Go ahead and remove these. So now that we have our input complete, let's go ahead and head up to our output. So essentially everything here can be brought up on a singular line. And there's going to be uh, a little bit of an interesting way to do this. So essentially the floor hole that we have on the right side of the factory, this is going to be our steel that'll be going up. And the left side will be our copper going up. And we can have all of this going up to a singular line, which is fantastic. Let's deal with the simpler output first, which is our copper ingots. So the middle of each foundation in the direct middle, we want our mergers with the output facing middle like so bring our lifts down
and connect them up. Rinse repeat on the opposite side. And then when it comes to the output, what I'm going to do here is let's bring our conveyor out to the first edge of the foundation that we have here. And then at a 45 degree angle, or essentially what would be, um, we go down one full foundation and then over a foundation and a half. It gives us our center point, if you will, and get that connected up just like that. And then on the opposite side here for our foundry output, even though the output is offset, so on this side it's on the left, and then on this side it's on the left, so if we look at the middle, it's not in, you know, symmetrical output. Uh, we can go ahead and actually just take our mergers and place them in the middle, essentially, and do that, you know, the three times that we need it. And then what I like to do here is getting in alignment with the output and then on this middle foundation line, we're going to place our lift first, output facing the middle. And then we're going to have our input be essentially right at the top here. And then we can place a lift down and it will snap directly into the lift. Repeat the same thing on the opposite side. This allows us the ability to put our belts and our mergers directly in the middle with any without any offset and we just get this nice little um, drop down if you will just repeat that four more times and then similar to what we did over here bring it into the half foundation bring it down 45 degrees and rotate and bring it in so that way we get this nice little gap here in the middle and what's really nice about this if I go ahead and take off my no clip and my flying is because of how we have this laid out instead of just bringing the belts all the way down into the middle and then turning them 90 degrees here this allows us the ability to walk through the middle uh, should you not be using any kind of mods or anything like that so it just it allows you to better more easily navigate the space overall which I felt was a nice little change of pace, if you will. So now that we have our outputs complete, let's go ahead and head up and get ready for our second floor. So when it comes to starting the next floor, just realized I placed this lift backward. Go ahead and fix that real quick. All right, so when it comes to starting the next floor, the front foundation area here is essentially going to become space for our staircase to navigate vertically. Um, so using the catwalks is a great way to measure the height that you need to go. So we pull up the catwalk stairs and we start at the second or what would I guess would be the joiner between the second and third foundation. Uh, go ahead and place your stairs. Weird snapping. Oh, it's some control glitch. Um, three stairs and then a standard catwalk crossing and then a T crossing next to it like so. The rail facing toward the middle of the factory. And then two more stairs or essentially this is just 20 meters in height or four, I'm sorry, five uh, four meter foundations. This would be the top of our next sandwich layer starting. So I'm gonna grab some more T-crossings, the railing facing the front of the factory now. I'm gonna actually zoom in a couple more here. Whoops, if I can get the rotation correct. And eventually this will continue up to our next floor. Um, this is just to get the alignment for our foundations here and making sure that we get them placed correctly in alignment with the bottom. So essentially we want to build out this whole space, um, which is now seven by 17 in total. Let's go ahead and fill this whole space in with foundations real quick. Head back to the stairs. And so to get our height, let's go ahead and take a one meter wall, build it next to the one meter foundation, a full wall below it, and then once again, another one meter wall. And then fill this space in at this point with more foundations, giving us a total clearance area in here of four meters. Makes it a little easier to navigate. Then what we had prior to this system, so 
greatly appreciate update 5 from Coffee Stains. Definitely was a game changer for the Sandwich Slayer. 100%. And also cheers to them for using that phrase and officially coining it. It was awesome. Alright, so we have our first Sandwich Slayer. I mean, I guess technically third, if you will. Uh, ready to go. So when it comes to the machinery that's going to be sitting on top of here, it'll be all constructors. We're going to be having eight in the back, 14 in the front. We're going to be starting one foundation in from either side, and we want the output of the constructor facing the outside edge of the factory. And when we are placing these, we want to make sure that... If we look at the hitbox here on the output on the output side of the constructor, it's in alignment with the uh, edge of the foundations. Bring it one step further, like so. Actually, I'm sorry, opposite direction. We want to go one step in toward the middle of the factory. The output facing the outside, so that way when we place the conveyor floor hole, we can place it on the seam here, and then we can place it directly in the middle on this side. And this is quite important for some nice symmetry of logistics when it comes to the interior of the sandwich layer. Yes, it'll be hidden away, um, but it'll just make things a little nicer overall to work with. So seven on one side, repeat the same thing on the opposite side. And again, going all the way to the edge, bring it in one step like so, and building out seven more on the opposite side here. I feel like I felt like I was doing that wrong for a second. <laughs> uh, let's see, I was at five, six, seven, and then skip four foundations, and then repeat the same thing, same uh, distance from the edge. And then as we see, utilizing the placement of the florals here, we can go ahead and get the rest in place following that same alignment. Go ahead and get... Whoop, got these three left. Uh, get, get these three left, and then go ahead and connect them up with our lifts. So now that we have all of that sorted out, we can go ahead and head down below to start working on our logistics. And actually, before we do that, we need to get our input to the floor. So if we just look on the side here, one and a half foundations in on each side. And again, the right side of the factory from the front or wherever we don't have the 14 constructors. That's the right side. So that's our steel coming up. Over here is our copper coming up. We can go ahead and bring that lift up facing the center here. Leave it for now. So in the middle here is where we have all of our inputs. And so here's where uh, the smart splitter will come into play. In the, in between each of the first four, or I'm sorry, we have our four inputs here. In between each pair, similar to the smelters and in them line on the middle of the foundation here, we can go ahead and place our splitter like so, get our lifts in place for both sides here. And then if we look at essentially where we're going to be having um, a belt come in here and we go into the middle of each of these on this middle, uh, this is where the smart splitter will come into play. So we can go ahead and place a smart splitter there and on each side of that, place a regular splitter and connect like so. And then here specifically between the smart splitter and the regular splitter, we want to use a Mark 1 belt. That is important. It has to be a Mark 1 belt. Otherwise, this logistics system will not work correctly. So I repeat, make sure you're using a Mark 1 belt. Uh, something's wrong with the... I think I might have messed up on a couple of those then. 
Uh, so, okay, so we got that one in place. Let's get the other one in place. Same thing. Hey, same thing. What do you know? I think uh, I think everything on this side is messed up. Yes. Go ahead and just fix all these now. I think these are correct. Yeah, those are all... Oh yeah, those are all snapped in correctly. Okay. Once again, splitter. Mark one belt. And then the input that's coming up. Go ahead and bring that uh, to the half foundation or in alignment with the uh, the input for the constructors. And then bring it down. Uh, again, a 45 degree angle, if you will. Like so. And then run it all the way down to our smart splitter. This is important. This one is not just for flare. This is logistically intentional as we're going to have a belt cut through the middle here and then in a similar sense for our steel we're going to again bring it to the uh, half foundation and then bring it in at a 45 and so we're going to have a belt running through the middle here essentially so we want to leave the space clean uh when it comes to if you do not well actually here let me go kind of cover this first so we have seven constructors on each side and instead of doing two one to seven splitter systems or one to seven and then dividing all of those the solution here is to utilize the belt speed to bottleneck and run our logistics so these are all going to be making our copper wire and the input is 15 copper ingots per minute so if we go down here we have our 60 uh item belt our mark one belt splitting off into two lines of 30 one and two and then each of those lines splits into two lines of 15 that go up the lifts. When we set up the smart splitter, we want the center to be overflow. We want the right and the left to be copper ingots. And this will force the belt speeds to essentially become bottlenecks. I attempted to try this with a basic splitter. It will not work. Even though we have 210 coming up, and we take 210 and divide that by 3, and that gives us 70. So essentially the splitter should be trying to put 70 items onto each belt. For whatever reason, there is some form of a rounding error, if you will. I'm not familiar or what, know what the technical term is, but essentially you will not get a full 60 items on each belt. You have to use the smart splitter to do that. Now here's the alternative. If you do not have the smart splitter, go ahead and backtrack and get rid of some of these. The list on the sides can stay as is, which is great. We're going to kind of back up a little bit. So what we want to do, we can kind of work this a little bit backwards, is we want two splitters in between the, uh, what would be the back, because this is the front of the factory. So wherever the input's coming up, we, those splitters immediately we want uh, splitters in front of them with the inputs facing the copper lines coming up. And then here, at a diagonal, we want a splitter in the middle. And then in front of these, on the side here, we want a merger with the output facing the side splitters. And then we want another splitter in front. So if we take that and bring our Mark III belt in, what we're going to do here is between the merger here and the splitter, so again, we have the mergers on either side, We'll take a Mark I belt and place that in between. Then these splitters can get connected in a very similar fashion. And we're still save, we're still occupying the same space, if you will. Uh, this is just a way to get around, again, getting around the smart splitter. And then what we can do here is from the first splitter, we can take our Mark I belt, bring that off. Actually, I, I'll stand corrected. The only belt that you need to be a Mark I is from the merger to the splitter here on the sides. These are the only ones that have to be a Mark I. Everything else can be Mark III. It's not a problem. So we can go ahead and do a Mark III on all of these and get everything in here connected up 
like so. Make sure we got one in between there. Make sure everything is connected up in every way, shape, or form. Perfect. And so the way this one works is essentially because of that rounding error, this kind of works around that too. So we have our 210 coming up. It'll split into what effectively would be three lines of 70. And then we'll have the remainder. Actually, I'm sorry, for safety's sake, because this is how I did it in the concept, we'll have these coming off the splitter here to be Mark 1s. Same thing with in between here. This is just to play it safe. I don't want to steer anyone wrong, so might as well use Mark 1s. In between this, we absolutely want a Mark 3 belt or higher. So we're going to get 60, or what we would be close to 60 on this line, close to 60 on this line, the remainder will go through. That'll once again try to split three ways, so that would theoretically be 90 splitting three ways, so we get 30, 30, and 30. But because of how this merger is functioning here, onto a Mark 1 belt, this is just ensuring that this belt will have 60 items per minute. As a result, this belt will back up, and this belt will back up. And that will result in a full throughput of 90 copper ingots per minute. Because if we take our 210 minus the 120 that we're pulling, we have 90 left over because we're doing 60 on each side. That's our 120. The back here is very simple. We only have three on each side. So all we need to do is take a splitter. Don't bring it right up against it. Bring it in on the seam here. So that way, once again, similar to down below with the foundries, we have a little bit of an accordion. So that way when we bring these down, we have a nice 90 degree bend on our belt here. Repeat the same thing on the opposite side. Oop, I'm off a little bit. And then all we need to do is bring that 90 belt down to a splitter in the middle here. like so. So that 90 will get split into two lines of 45, and then that 45 gets split into three lines of 15, filling out the rest of our constructors at 100% efficiency. So that's the workaround if you do not have a smart splitter. would recommend grabbing them. They're very helpful for when you want to do similar load balancing. When it comes to our steel pipes, this is very easy. In a similar fashion to what we just did for the early phase of the copper up there. We're just going to be essentially taking between our pairs on each side. Placing our splitters. Running a splitter in the middle here. And then, like so. Repeat the same thing on the opposite side. everything's all connected up correctly looks like it is and so that's the the input for our steel pipes very simple just a one to eight very traditional now when it comes to the outputs here if we go to and let me just double check yep so i just wanted to match just wanted to double check um so our floor holes that are going to be going up and i guess also not i guess but the conveyor floor holes that are going to be going up and down uh in the middle of our four foundation gap in the middle of the second foundation in from the edge. We're going to place our conveyor lift floor holes, one on the seam, two on each side essentially. Repeat the same thing on the opposite side. And then when it comes to the output for our steel, this will be going up in this lift here. And so you want the input into that lift to be facing the edge of our factory. And then what we're going to be doing is taking all eight of these and bringing them in line on one side. So starting with the opposite side, we can skip this one. So I'm in the back right of the factory now from where the stairs are. We're going to place lifts directly on the middle of the foundations like so. So that way when we bring our lifts down, they will snap directly to the mergers. And then we get a nice 90 degree bend here. And then go to the opposite side and do the same thing, running it toward uh, the middle of the factory. 
And then what's nice here is we can go ahead and bring this all the way around and we get a nice 90 degree loop just like that. And then again, bringing all these lifts down into the mergers. I didn't hear a snap because I misplaced the merger and I misplaced that one too. Okay, and we can get this all connected up with a Mark III belt. Okay. And so then what we're going to do here is we want to take a splitter and place it directly in front of the output of the merger. And then we can place a merger at its diagonal over to the right. And essentially what we want to do here is we want to uh, pull 60 pipes off of this belt here. So that, again, the easiest way to do that is to uh, use the Mark I belt to force a bottleneck. So the merger connecting to the lift, you want to make sure this is a Mark I belt. And then we can go ahead and get everything connected up like so. so. Essentially, we're going to have our steel pipes flooding onto these two pipes, overflow into the Mark I, causing a backup. And then the output to the next floor over here, I'm going to take the uh, lift and face it toward the interior. We're going to bring our output. Uh, essentially, we're going to be making a 45 degree angle over here. So instead of being directly in line, now you can see I'm getting this green snapping grid here. Bring it one foundation, or I'm sorry, one step back. And that'll allow us to bring it all the way over here. Rotate once and then bring it over. This will give us a nice 45 degree belt curve. And essentially it's symmetrical cutting through the middle of our factory here. Um, if you wanted, I guess you could always bring it. Actually, no, yeah, that's the correct positioning. <laughs> My mistake. Um, so we, yeah, we get a nice little 45 degree cut uh, through here. For the output of our copper wire, this is going to be a little different. Starting with the front left constructor's output, we're going to have this face the front. This is going to loop all the way down to the opposite side here, so let's go ahead and continue on this path. Similar to the steel pipe outputs, we want the merger to be located on the center of the foundation and just run all of these toward the center of the factory. Like so. And then on the uh, lift here, so whatever's not the, the middle one, because that's going to be um, our rotors or stators coming down. At the moment, I don't recall which one's which, uh, but that's going to be the output coming down to the floor below us. Uh, so we're going to have all of these merging here. And so essentially, this is going to be the uh, stators we're going to be pulling uh, 240 wire onto this side of the factory. So make sure you're using your Mark III belts. That's all connected. And now, similar to the steel pipes, we can bring this lift, bring it all the way over. And again, we get that nice 90 degree uh, turn here. And then with the lift hole that we have in place there same thing take our mergers facing the middle of the factory and getting those all connected up as well and this is going to be a line of 180 wire going up and this will be for our uh, steel rotors Actually, we don't need a merger or a lift on the back one here. My apologies. We just, I'm sorry, we don't need a merger on it. We can just use a lift like so. And that's all sorted out. So here we can go ahead and not place. We're not actually going to bring it straight down. This is where uh, the critical placement of our constructors comes into play when it comes to dealing with the output from the floor above. So for right now, we're not going to do anything with the outputs here. We'll come back down and revisit. But we, I know that we're going to be placing our lifts facing the interior side here. Actually, I stand corrected. We can do this right now. So if we follow this all the way down from the output, so again, middle, follow it down toward the front of the factory. And then in the middle here, between we, our pairs that we have, 
If I go ahead and actually just delete this one foundation real quick, you can see our lifts, lift holes down below. So if we just go ahead and just place our lift floor hole here, directly in the middle, bring our uh, lift input here, and then if we look at our output that's going to be all the way down there, bring it to the cross section of the four foundations, bring it back to, this will give us a nice 90 degree bend, this will connect directly in. And so this is why that constructor position was critical. By moving from what I had concepted, I had the constructors placed one meter to the left of here. By moving it, this now allows us to bring a nice 90 degree belt with symmetry space or the symmetrical space on either side, get a nice 90 degree turn directly into the lift going down below. So with that, we can go ahead and re repeat the same process, conveyor lift floor hole where the four corners of the foundations are. Two steps in and bring it all the way back to our output. That is the logistics for this first sandwich layer. It's time to get started on the second, third floor, third floor. All right, to wrap up our third and final floor, we're going to continue our catwalks all the way over until we are at the second foundation in. And then from this point, we're going to take our catwalk stairs and go up three times. Use our T-walk crossing rails facing the middle once more. Standard catwalk. Take our catwalk stairs up three more times. And then this is going to denote the top of the build. I'm sorry, the top of the sandwich layer. Go ahead and get some more of uh, these catwalks in place just to kind of round it out and enable us to build our foundations. Uh, so essentially this is just six four meter foundations or 24 meters off of the uh, ground floor here. And so this time around, we're gonna do things a little different. Let me make sure I got my alignment correct. Um, so we're gonna build out this full top layer here and then we're essentially going to make a double decker, um, not the same way we did the very ground floor. Um, we're actually just going to have essentially um, two four meter layers in between this and the floor below, essentially. Um, and then it'll just help us with some logistics because we're utilizing assemblers on this floor. And so the double stack sandwich layer is just going to make the placement of all of those log logistics a lot simpler overall. So once we get that in place, we can go ahead and take our one meter wall, do a standard wall, four meter height, one meter, four meter, and then a one meter. And then where these one meter walls are, we're essentially going to build a layer of foundations uh, to complete the sandwich. Okay, now that we have that in place, let's go ahead and get our assembler placement situated first. So starting from the front of the factory, we're going to be placing our assemblers in quite a similar fashion as what we did way down below on our first floor. The assemblers are going to be placed one meter in from the front, one meter in from the side, and then we don't want the front of the assembler to cross over where these two foundations meet. And then we're going to essentially go into the middle of this layer. So we're going to count 17 long now. So we're going to count eight. So we know that this is our middle. And then we're going to take a foundation row off each side. We don't want anything occupying here, but it's this edge between these highlighted foundations and the non-highlighted that we want to place our assembler in a similar fashion. And do six. And then we want essentially a full three meter gap here. I'm sorry, a three foundation gap. And then we're gonna place our additional assemblers and then round out the symmetry on the far side here. Go ahead and get our floor holes in place as well. So in placing these, we wanna make sure that there's no yellow or essentially we're just not clipping into the actual assembler itself. We want them just on the outside. And don't forget your chevron rotation alignment to make the lift placement easier.
Okay, now that we have our lifts in place, let's figure out the inputs coming up from the floor below. So we have our three, um, uh, oh my gosh, um, floor holes. And so, um, foundation and a half in, in alignment with down below. We're going to bring those up. We're not going to bring all three of these up to the floor above. Let's repeat the same thing on the opposite side. So again, foundation and a half in, middle. And so from the front side, we have our copper wire coming up. And from the rear of the factory, we have our steel pipes coming up. Now, there's two ways you can go about doing this. Whichever your preference is, you can either go for the symmetry, if you will, or you can go based on material. So if you want all of your steel pipes to be coming up onto the same floor, then what we're going to do on this side, or the left side of the factory, is we're going to have our conveyor lift immediately face toward the long edge of the factory like so and the opposite side the steel beams are going to go up to the floor above so we can go ahead and place a floor hole here uh, foundation and a half in and then this will face toward again the long edge like so and so this will keep no whoop, i'm whoop, nope we want this to stay down here. <laughs> My apologies. Uh, and this will cut. Nope, we can't do that. Can't. It's only one. It's only one way. It has. It has to be this way. I, I'm sorry. I got co totally confused. Jeez. Um. <clears throat> uh, I, I I stand corrected. I actually, I double checked. I wanted to make sure I got it right. We can, in fact, do uh, floor the sandwiches by material. So, in this example, I'm gonna improvise a little bit. Hopefully, I don't mess up. Uh, if I do, see the bloopers. So we have our steel pipes coming up. And so this will be uh, the first one to come up. So we're going to keep that on the ground here. And then the steel pipes are going to be going up this lift over here. So we're essentially going to take the same thing and go in. No, I am correct. You cannot do... Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to have to play rotational symmetry. So the copper wire is going to be coming up on the right side of the factory here. It's the front with our catwalks. So we're going to have our wire coming up first on this side, and then our steel is going to be going up second on this side. My apologies for the confusion. Terribly sorry. I uh, tried to improvise. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it in, though, um, for the sake of just leaving it in and let you know that you know, I, too, make mistakes. Uh, so on this side as well, we're going to bring up our lift, and we want both lifts, however, we definitely want both of them facing the exterior side. And then when it comes to the output here, the way we're going to arrange this is we're going to have on the half foundation in, we're going to put a floor hole in, and then list lift will come down and receive into that lift there, and then that will go all the way down. We already have that connected down to the bottom of the factory. When it comes to running the logistics for all this, I guess actually real quick too, we can go ahead and get this side set up as well. Um, but the reason, the benefit of the double stack sandwich layer here is because we are using so many assemblers, this will make the process easier. So we can also bring these up too. So starting with our wire that's coming up here, we can essentially just bring this and follow this line, this foundation alignment all the way down. Although actually, sorry, first thing we want to do is figure out, we have our inputs for the assemblers on the top portion of our sandwich here. We need to bring six of these down. So for simplicity's sake, we're going to take the left side, bring in our floor holes underneath each one. So that way we can see where the copper wire is going to be going. So we'll bring our lifts down like so. And then I guess while we're also on this floor, we can go ahead and preemptively set up some logistics. So if you know that the copper wire is coming up from below, that means that we're going to be handling the steel pipes on this floor. In front of each of the middle assemblers on this floor, we can go ahead and place our splitter. And similar to previous placements, we want the ability to see the accordion 
So that way when we place the other lifts, we get the nice 90 degree turn. Do the same thing on this side here as well. The input is facing the middle. And then in front of this uh, splitter, or I'm sorry, on the side of it, we want to have, a, a, have an additional splitter on the middle foundation lines here. And this is essentially is what will meet our copper wire that's coming up. And we're definitely gonna get a, too, a belt too long, which is totally fine. Or actually, I'm sorry, this, <laughs> this is the steel pipes. Um, so we have our steel pipes coming up and this will meet. So this will split into the splitter on the right and on the back side, this will split into this splitter. Then we can place the rest of our lifts like so. That one's in place. So an easy one to six split. And then all we need to do is essentially repeat the same process. So in front of each lift going up, input of the splitter facing the middle. And then we want the input facing where the copper wire is coming up on this side. Like so, get our lifts in place. And we're effectively just repeating literally what we did on the floor above. So now that we have that side complete, we are essentially going to be repeating the same process on the opposite side. So we're going to again take our left inputs and have those be the ones that go down to the bottom sandwich layer. And effectively repeat the same process again. Make sure everything is connected up as it needs to be. So then you can kind of see why, why, why I corrected myself and that we cannot do it um, the same material on each floor. Because if we had this coming up here, this would conflict with how we have our belts arranged here. Uh, which we can always solve for, but I think the symmetry here and how, you know, like for facing the factory from this side, the right side goes up, the left side stays on the first and the exact same process is accomplished over here. So we have that rotational symmetry, if you will. So I'm just gonna make sure that we have all of the belts in place as needed. Belt speed here does not matter whatsoever. Just wanna make sure everything is balanced on the standard one to six. So I think we are all set, which is fantastic. Oh, just the belt here actually. There we go. Okay. So now when it comes to the output, uh, we're going to be doing something a little different here. So we want the output of all of this um, to come down. I'm sorry, the the back six here will come down to the right. This is the right side of the factory, uh, the right output. And so what we're going to do here is a little, um, I guess you can call it interesting, if you will. Um, so we're just going to be placing our mergers and I'm going to be placing these in a specific way. So on this one, for example, we're placing this on where the four corners are. So that way when the belt comes out of this lift here, we get our nice clean 90. And we're just going to be bringing these lifts down uh, essentially directly underneath the assemblers. And then having the outputs, or I'm sorry, having them all merge together onto the single belt here, like so. And this will merge in here. And then we're going to take the back three and do the exact same thing. We're going to take these and merge them out toward the long edge. Can't place a belt from there. And so these will all come down and merge into this merger. And then this will feed down into a lift here. 
and then those will all make their way down the factory. And then we're essentially going to repeat the same process. But here's a little different. We don't need to loop around just because of how things became a little offset. So we're just going to have our mergers placed on the middle of the foundations here. Don't need one for this one. And if you wanted to move the mergers a little closer to the lifts here, you can absolutely do that. Uh, so that way you don't need to place the extra belt uh, to fill in that gap there. But I just like placing them on the middle of the foundations here. I don't particularly mind myself personally. Okay. So that is the output for the floor. And that all comes down. Again, we don't want to touch on this. Um, or at least, if, you, if you'd like to, you can. I guess I can quickly... Well, I'll cover this at the end. Uh, we'll go ahead and leave these unconnected for now. Um, but we can at, at least follow these down. So we have our outputs coming down. Um, and if we actually real quick follow, I guess it would help to also inform you all what's what. So if we have our... If we go down to the output from the sandwich layer here... Uh, this is going to be our 60 pipes where we have the split and merger system. And so the 60 pipes are going to be serving the steel rotors. So we can then follow this one up. Up again. And this is going off towards the back of the factory. So the rear side of the factory, these will be making our steel rotors. So we can go ahead and get those recipes set right now. And then that means the front six will be making our stators. Okay. And then so then our constructors up front, these will be making uh, our wire. Also, uh, we can do our copy pasting. Which is super convenient. And then our back eight here, these will be making our steel pipes. Go ahead and copy that. Make sure it's set correctly. Oops. Copy from here. Make sure that's correct. Okay. Now we can go down below. So I guess we can also set our foundries for making steel ingots. Copy that. Our smelters, all of these, will be making our copper ingots. And then all three of our assemblers up front here will be making our motors. Must be standard recipe. All right. So if we, fo if we follow all of that down, the output comes down and we'll head down below so now we'll be working in this space to get everything sorted out to create our motors so to round out our factory we're going to be able to work with some symmetry here so we have our rotors coming down from the left side i'm sorry the right side and then we have our stators coming down from the left and essentially, I brought the lifts down. We're going to delete them and then rebuild them. But this will at least cue you in on positionals. And so, as I mentioned before, the outputs here and the way we're going to be setting up the logistics, uh, it would be beneficial if you have a smart splitter. Um, so that way we can benefit the forcing of, like, overflow. Um, we're forcing the direction of our stators and our rotors, respectively. Um, so first... And foremost, we're going to be placing a splitter where each of the accordions come down from the lifts. Go ahead and delete these and we'll go ahead and redrop them. Like so. And then on the opposite, I'm sorry, on the front side, looking toward the front of the factory. Or am I totally backwards right now? Yes, okay, so this is the front of the factory, sorry. Um, so on the, we're facing the input of the splitter. On its left side, we want to place 
a smart splitter. And we want the front side to be our stator, or the center to be our stator. And then the right side will be overflow. And then what we can do, a foundation, a full foundation over, is we can place our merger, the output facing the long edge. And so, oh, sorry, this wants to, this should be in line with the regular splitter, not the smart splitter. And so we have 30 stators coming down. And this will get split into 10, 10, and 10. And so we effectively will take 10 here and 10 here and merge this into a line of 20 coming out in this direction. And then we'll have our uh, 10 for our storage going through the smart splitter. And this will be going into a conveyor lift hole right here. And so we can get this connected up. And then that output will cycle back into this merger. So essentially once this is full, which would be our storage down below here, as you can see, it's now in alignment. So we can go ahead and for right now, just show you kind of how this is going to get placed. We can bring our lift down. But we want this actually placed one back like so. So that way that's in alignment here. The lift, we can always bring this down one more. Actually, I think it'd be a little more visually appealing. So once the storage container maxes out, this will this line will get backed up and this will force the remainder with the 10, the additional 10 to come onto this line here. And then this will give us a line of 30 staters per minute once our inventory is full. And then that'll allow us to then loop in the middle assembler here and get a total output of 15 motors per minute. So we can go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side. So a full foundation away, we can place our merger, get our smart splitter facing toward the front, like so. Floor hole. If we want to go ahead and get our storage down here now as well. And then take our belts, like so. And the belt speed here does not matter because the pro if we if we're using the smart splitter, this will just uh, you know be normal. If you wanted to kind of undercut yourself on rotor and stator production, you can always just use a regular splitter here. And then once that's filled up, you'll still be able to achieve the same result without an issue. And then when it comes to the input for our assemblers, in a similar fashion to our foundries, uh, I'm just gonna bring the left side all the way down. So just to kind of get some alignment here, I'll bring down the lift, place the splitter and then delete it and then replace. And so we'll just bring our, would be our, I believe rotors over like so. And then for here, uh, same thing. Make sure you're not targeting the belt specifically. You're targeting the ground underneath. We'll build up twice, delete, bring our lifts down. This will be bringing our stators up. Oh, I believe it's actually, this is this side is our rotors. Uh, and then we can just place a lift here and bring this all the way around like so. And then the uh, output from our motors will essentially be going into this floor hole here. Actually, I'm sorry, this will be going one back uh, in this tight little spot here. So that way, as you can see here, it's right up against the edge. And then we just bring this down, place our storage like so, get our lift. So that is our motor output. Actually, I'm sorry. For, we don't want to do that. Um, if we want to sync all of this, what we're going to want to do is take, again, a smart splitter. And you can kind of put this almost in any direction you'd like. You know, because we have the inputs coming from underneath our factory, we could always just have the output going from out of our factory too. So that's what I'll go ahead and 
arrange this for. So I'm placing the input off to the side here instead of in line. And what this will allow me to do is place a lift here. And then we can connect this up, get a nice 90 degree turn. And then take the left of this and the left output is going to be our motor. And then we'll call the right is going to be overflow. And then we'll go ahead and just place a floor hole here. Get that connected up like so. And then this belt output would be running to the awesome sink, uh, wherever it might be, or it can be, you know, running to some kind of transportation uh, one way or another. But this essentially is the uh, full 15 per minute output once our storage is at capacity. And so just bringing this all together now, we have our floor hole, bring in our lift, and get our merger in place. I think this is correct. Placement here. Yep. Which is just essentially offset from the middle of the foundation. You can always bring down the lift, align it, delete the lift, uh, and replace it. And so the motors go down, as we just covered. Goes through, hits our smart splitter, overflow comes down here. And that is essentially... Build complete. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some polish on the build like I always do. Find some awesome music and uh, get some power routed out and I'll see you all on the other side. Apologies, there is one last thing I forgot to cover and that is connecting the floors together utilizing the small frame pillars. These guys right here. So these are really nice for utilizing, like essentially running belts through. It looks like it gives it a little bit of extra support and sturdiness. So we're gonna go ahead and add these in. So what we're gonna wanna do is at the top, or like on the bottom of the sandwich layer, uh, go ahead and place a one meter foundation, like so. And then where that mid the middle of the foundation is, is where we want to place our pillar. And we can go ahead and, <clears throat> go ahead and zoop it all the way down, like so. Go ahead and get rid of the one meter foundations and then we'll just build the rest to kind of clip them up and in. And now we have our full support. And then what we can do here is just taking our lifts. If you just kind of essentially aim, I mean, you'll be able to figure it out where you're hearing the beeping um, of the snapping point. And essentially just run it like that. And then I like to again have the exposed side facing the interior. And you can such just repeat this same process on all of our floor holes as needed. And you'll be all set. The other option, I guess, if you really wanted to, is you could always not use the uh, frame pillar. You can instead just use like, you know, a concrete pillar essentially accomplish the oh, same effect uh, in hiding everything. You just want to place your lift first and then just build top and bottom. You get a little bit of exposure on the side here, which honestly kind of looks kind of neat, but it's a way to kind of hide away all of the belting anyway. If you really want to do it, I'm not a huge fan of it. I actually rather enjoy the pillar. So we'll go ahead and swap those out across the board. And uh, yes, so this is technically build complete. If you are curious how I run power to my builds, I have a separate video for that. I'll have that in the end screen of this guide. And because uh, it, it still applies, you know, I, that was back from well before update five. It still applies to this as well. Just essentially running power along the bottom side of the sandwich layer overall. And uh, yeah, all right, so officially build complete and I will see you all on the other side.
All right, and that'll wrap up the build. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. I really enjoyed the fact that the stators and rotors can be looped back in to make more motors. This was actually a suggestion from someone over on Twitch by the name of Demius. Thank you for the suggestion. Awesome. Came out great. I also like the double stack sandwich layers. I think this kind of design change helps the logistic placement of things and also just visually tidies them up. Even though it's all technically hidden away, it still looks good and feels good to build it. So with that, I hope you all enjoyed the build. If you did, feel free to leave a like. It does help out the channel. If you want to see more content in the future, be sure to subscribe here if you're not already. And if you have any questions about the build, leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But with that, Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.